Hey guys, and welcome to or back to the Pause in Pursuit podcast with your host, Summer Clark. Um, where to begin? Sorry about missing last week, guys. Um, I didn't upload an episode last week because it was the day that, well, no, yeah, it was the day after I got diagnosed uh, with a stress fracture in my foot, which being an agility person is, well, it's not, but it felt like the end of the world. So I did spend last Wednesday in a pit of despair, uh, wallowing in self-pity. And I'm not even afraid to admit that because I couldn't be bothered to even try to be positive. <laughs> um, the day after, I was just like, you know what? No, <laughs> not having it. Um, and I just, I just didn't want to record, to be honest. I didn't really know what to talk. Well, actually, I did. This is the episode that I was meant to do last week. But I just didn't want to. So I was like, I'm not going to. So that was why um, I did not upload an episode last week. But you know what? That's fine. And I'm back now and I'm in better spirits now. Um, Things have got better in a week. Um, Essentially, if you didn't already know, um, I basically hurt my foot a month ago. I woke up and it was randomly painful, competed at Iconics the next day and I couldn't bear weight on it by the end of that day. Sorry, that was my stomach rumbling, even though I've literally just eaten lunch. Okay. The chicken and avocado bagel clearly did not do the trick. Um, Tangent already. Anyway, um, didn't get any answers for three weeks, essentially, um, from the useless GPs and the useless hospital and the useless A&E. Everyone just brushed it off as not that big a deal, as I always seem to get that um, when I go for medical help, because apparently I don't look like there's actually anything wrong with me. I'm clearly just too much... I'm too much of a brave looking person or something. I don't know. Uh, But anyway, second x-ray, it didn't show up on the first x-ray. Second x-ray, it did show up as a healed callus, which is essentially a stress fracture that has already started the healing process. Um, And on the x-ray, it is very minor. I'll give them that. Um, You can't even see the break, but you can see the fluffy bit on the x-ray. It kind of looks fluffy around the bone and that's a healed callus. That's why, that's where new bone is growing. So, That was a week ago last night. Uh, It's currently Wednesday. A week ago last night, I got that diagnosis. And recovery is supposedly six to eight weeks. Um, But I kind of didn't rest it for the first three weeks because I didn't realise it was a bloody stress fracture. I just thought it was some sort of like just a tendony thing that would just wear off and be fine. Uh, But no, I carried on doing everything on it for three weeks because I didn't get any answers. Uh, So I'm not counting those as recovery time. So I'm kind of classing myself as having rested for a week, if that makes sense. Um, I had a call with a physio, uh, not yesterday, day before. And they said to rest it for another three to five weeks from now. So that's really not that bad. Not that bad at all. I was quite pleased with that. Uh, four to six weeks from being diagnosed with it. So I've done a week, so three to five weeks from now. So that lifted my spirit because I thought, you know what, that's really not that long. And that takes us to nearly the end of November, third week in November. Hopefully I'll be fine by the time December happens, um, which will be great timing for Olympia, which is end of December. So I'm going to start doing some distance work with Arrow um, this coming weekend. I'll have had two weeks there, nearly two weeks of fully, fully resting, uh, going a bit insane, but it's fine. Um, and then I'm going to start doing distance work and just build up gradually, uh, until obviously I can run again, um, hopefully in December. But yeah, so that's kind of a, an update on my injury. So kind of good news, I think. Um, it is definitely less painful now than it was since I've been resting it. I'm literally stuck in the house, except for when I get driven somewhere. And I get dropped off at the door, for example, food places, Starbucks, etc. And I can walk, but I can't put full weight on my right foot. I haven't tried since it happened, to be fair. Um, Because when I did, it was very painful. And I'm just not prepared to see if it's... Do you get what I mean? I just don't want to risk that yet. So I'm just hobbling around, uh, walking very slowly. But yeah, um, I did do a... I held a training class... um, two weeks ago, I think, before I got the diagnosis. And it obviously didn't do it great. Um, It was worse afterwards, obviously, because I was doing a training class, holding a training class on a stress fracture, lol. Uh, But but apart from that, it was a great session. Um, I just love teaching so much. Um, 
and all the teaching appointments that I do just confirms to me that it's what I want to do. Obviously, part of my mental breakdowns about this stress fracture is that I was just getting into teaching, um, starting to really make it, a, you know, start making it my actual career. And then now I can't do that because of my foot. But hopefully it won't be much more than another six weeks max, hopefully. So that's a foot update. Um, on a more positive note, even though that was not that negative, um, I did release my online running dog walk course, which is super exciting. I've been wanting to do this for ages because it has taken me and Arrow, well, we all know what, if you listen to this podcast or you know me and Arrow at all in any way, shape or form, you probably know how nervous he was and how, you know, non not confident he was on his contacts. And now he has the most stunning running dog walk from all the hard work we've put in. So I thought, you know what? I get so many compliments and questions about Arrow's running dog walk. Let me just make a course on it that people can buy and literally follow step by step the process that I went through to get Arrow from how he was with his dog walk to how he is now. Um, and yeah, so literally from the very start to where he is now is the course. So if you're interested in that, hit me up, send me a DM. It's worth £120, but for the new, because it's a fairly new release, I'm offering it for just £100. Um, and yeah, you get in-depth video tutorials and their transcripts as well. Um, and as well, you can ask for 24-7 feedback from me. So you can send me your training videos and I will speak to you whenever you would like me to. So yeah, that's really cool. Um, still doing, obviously, my online coaching as well. I have quite a few students now, which I love. Um, I'm always taking on more. So if you'd like to basically be one-to-one -one coached by me, also please do get in touch. Very similar vibe to the uh, online running dog walk course, but the tutorials and transcripts are personalized to exactly what you want to achieve as an individual with your dog. Uh, same thing, you can send me training videos and ask for feedback 24-7 from me. And also we do weekly check-ins um, and discuss your progress and how to move forward. So yeah, I'm really enjoying the online uh, training side of it, especially while I can't do in-person training. Um, so yeah, just trying to stay positive. You know, as they say, nothing worth having comes easy and, you know, setbacks are all part of the process. And if I can stay positive and get through this period, then I can do bloody anything, can't I? So we're, we're trying to stay positive. But yeah, that's pretty much a life update. Really, really haven't been doing a lot um, because I am not supposed to. Um, but yeah, so not not huge life update apart from that. That's pretty much been my entire life. Trying to stay busy at home, uh, you know, do my online work and, you know, do my home workouts, which I have filmed for you guys and I will be uploading shortly. Um and yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much life. But today, 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 we are going to be well, I'm going to be giving you the running dog walk survival guide. Um, so it's my very own running dog walk survival guide from my experience going through the process of teaching a running dog walk from scratch. Uh, this can also apply to retrains though as well. And I just thought this was a cool topic idea to kind of celebrate uh, the launch of my running dog walk course release. So I have a few points um, of how you can better go through the process of teaching a running dog walk, basically. So without further ado, because I have been waffling for 10 minutes as per, let's dive into it. So my first point is obviously sign up to a course or seek the help of someone who has been through the process and come out the other side. So, you know, at the end of the day, you have to learn from something or someone. You can't just know things. So I'd advise you to choose someone who currently has what you want to achieve and has got there under similar circumstances to you, potentially. So, for example, I did Katrina, Dave and Lucy's running dog walk course at the same time with Arrow when he was little to get different perspectives and find what worked for us, because not everyone's methods are going to work for everyone. So don't be afraid to use snippets of different trainers approaches and combine them to create your own approach for you and your dog, because every dog is different, as I always harp on about. So this is a great example of adapting to suit the needs of your individual dog and essentially becoming a better trainer. So the, the better you can adapt um, and improvise and be flexible 
from seeing what your dog is like as an individual, the better trainer you are going to become and the easier the process is going to be, not only for the dog you're currently training, but for all future dogs you train, um, if you want to be a trainer, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, always reach out to people who are where you want to be. That's I've always done that. Always, 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 you know, find your role models, people that inspire you, that motivate you, that you are impressed by and learn from them because we all start where we don't know what to do in a certain topic or area. Do you know what I mean? And we have to learn from those that do to get to where they are. So that is my number one piece of advice. Don't try to do it alone. You'll just get frustrated. Number two, do not compare your journey to someone else's, especially not the rate at which your dog is learning. This is a huge one and goes for every single aspect of training. So every dog learns at a totally different rate, which is why my online course is to be completed entirely at your own pace. So a huge green flag in um, courses and for trainers is, you know, going at the pace of the student and the dog, uh, because there's no point comparing. Like I said, no one's going to be the same. No dog's the same. So, you know, just because someone else's dog has progressed faster than yours doesn't mean they're going to have a better running dog walk than your dog in the end when the process is over, for example. So Arrow took over four years to master it and he now has a consistently awesome dog walk, I like to think. So instead of comparing yourself to others, use them as a way to give and receive support. So for example, you're both going through a challenging process together. So use that if that makes sense. You know, lean on each other, support each other, talk about the process together, you know, compare but in a sort of in a curious way, you know, don't necessarily compete against each other or whatever, just, you know, use people that are also going through it as more of a support system than a means of comparison, if that makes sense. Um, And use those that are ahead of you as inspiration and motivation to work, keep working super hard and get to where they are eventually. And like I said, there is no rush. There is literally no time bomb attached to training at all. Um, You have all the time in the world. So just focus on yourself and your dog and only ever compete against yourself and your dog, if that makes sense. Just try and do better than you did the previous session or the previous week or whatever. Next point, stay consistent. Again, same with every aspect of training. Choose a method and stick it out. So, for example, the MAP method, that's the method I use to train running dog walk. So you have to give a method time before deciding if it is or isn't working for you. So there's no point choosing a method and then trying it out for a week, two weeks. And if you're not seeing adequate progress or, well, quote unquote, adequate what you expect um, from that, ditching it. Like you can't just do that. You have to give it a decent amount of time. So spend enough time mastering one method before introducing another. So, you know, if you spend months on a method and it really isn't working at all, fair enough, you can switch. Um, But you know, as far as introducing another on top of that goes, for example, introducing a stride regulator once the map method has been used to its full potential. So these extra methods should complement your original method. So for example, I used the map method, but then once I had used the map method to the full potential, and Arrow's stride was still slightly out when he was on a full dog walk. I then introduced a stride regulator. So I coupled two methods together which is what worked for my individual dog, if that makes sense. So also use jackpot reinforcement. So make it crystal clear to your dog which hits are the most desirable. For example, multiple treats for double back foot hits, if that's your criteria, and a single treat for double front foot or one foot hits. That is how I did it with Arrow. Jackpot reinforcement is basically the best way to make it clear to your dog, you know, what are we really looking for here? What am I really wanting from you and what is okay? But really you should strive for this, the thing that gets you all the rewards. Because if your dog just receives one reward for every kind of hit, they're never, like one type of hit is never going to stand out to them and it's never going to become more frequent. Whereas if the double back foot hit receives a jackpot, then in their head, they're going to be like, I want to do that more because I get more treats out of it, if that makes sense. The next point is to keep sessions keep sessions short to maintain your dog's focus and motivation. So you want to keep it fun for your dog as this is when they'll perform the best. That's obvious, you know, no one wants to do something that's all work and no fun. Why would you want to do that? You know, humans are the same. If there's no reward, why do we bother? You know, we wouldn't go to work for free, if that makes sense. 
if we or you know even if we do get paid like a dog gets paid in treats i suppose if we hate every second of it then we're probably going to look for another job anyway even despite the reward so you don't always have to end on a perfect rep either which is a big one that i had to learn as a perfectionist i always used to think that i had to end my sessions on the perfect rep or at least a you know a really good rep and i had to keep going until i got that rep and then i could end the session Whereas really, trying to achieve this will just frustrate you both as your dog's level of fatigue increases. So as your dog gets more physically and mentally fatigued, they're basically getting less likely to achieve that perfect rep that you're looking for. And then you're just going to have like, you're just going to spend ages having loads of terrible reps and then end up ending on a bad rep anyway. Whereas, you know, you may as well just have finished earlier on a bad rep, if that if that makes sense. So you know, keep your sessions a certain length. And even if you have to end on a bad rep, maybe try for a good rep, maybe two, three times. And if you don't get one at that point in the session, just call it quits for that day and try again tomorrow. You really don't have to end on a perfect rep. That's, you know, I think people think, and I used to think, the last rep sticks in your dog's mind the most, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, not really. Okay. Not really. You don't, you don't have to do that. It's usually more detrimental than it is helpful. And then only move on to the next stage in the process when your dog's success rate is at least 95%. So again, it's quality over quantity and, you know, quality over speed of progression. So your dog needs to have a crystal clear understanding of a behaviour before that behaviour is made harder. So there's no point making something harder that your dog doesn't understand in the first place properly, if that makes sense. Think of it as yourself. If you're at work and you were given a task that you weren't really sure how to do and then before you'd even understood it fully, you were moved on something harder that was like that was based on that first task, but even harder. It's just never going to happen, is it? Like it's such an unrealistic expectation. So make sure that it's clear that your dog has a really, really solid understanding of that first behavior before progressing. And again, Don't have an expectation on how long it should take at that stage for your dog to get it. Just go with the flow and however long it takes is however long it takes for your dog and just accept that. If your dog is struggling with a stage, it's okay and actually advisable to revert to the previous stage for a little while. So often going back to the most basic form of a behaviour helps to solidify the foundations of it in your dog's mind. So there's absolutely no shame whatsoever in going back to an easier step. If your dog's struggling with something, think, okay, we'll go back to the step before, get that even more crystal clear, and then try moving forward again. Going back to basics and foundations, and I always say this in every aspect of training, is a good idea. It's never a bad thing, even if your dog has a great understanding of the end behaviour. There's no harm in going back and, you know, for example, revisiting the mat on the floor every now and again. Like, there's absolutely no harm in doing that. And there is no shame in it whatsoever. Do not fight it. Just go with it. So film your sessions. And a bit like in competition, I love having my runs, my sessions filmed because with footage, you can analyse your dog's behaviour after the session is finished and more accurately figure out what you can do to set them up for success in the next session. So this is especially helpful when you want to analyse your dog striding across the plank, for example. It is often super tricky to do this in real time because your dog's going so fast, etc, etc. And, you know, you're trying to think about that you're you're staring at the contact at the mat to make sure that they hit it, see how they hit it, to see whether you reward, whether you jackpot, etc. And you aren't concentrating on the striding necessarily. So tripods are perfect for this if you don't have someone with you. I take my tripod everywhere when I go somewhere to train or compete by myself. If not, I get usually my mum or a friend to film for me. This is so, so helpful. Analyzing um, your dog's performance after a run or after a training session helps so much. Honestly, trust me, it's so helpful. And then you can make your training plan for the next session based on how your dog was in that session. And you just, it's like getting a second opinion from yourself. Like, yes, you saw in real time what your dog was like, but it isn't quite the same. Then you can go back for a second time and kind of relive the session. And then that really, really confirms it in your mind, what went wrong, what went well, and what you need to improve on and how you're going to improve on that next time you go out and train. 
So the last point then is be consistent and minimalistic with your cues. So, for example, use an obvious cue that doesn't sound like another cue. Don't overuse the cue. Use a loud and clear tone and don't incorporate other cues such as go. So, for example, my famous posh on the dog walk. So obvious, right? So obvious to Arrow what that means. OK, nothing else I say sounds like that. OK, it's loud. It's clear. You know, I don't go push, go, push, go, push, arrow, push. You know, it's all just that one cue. Um, it doesn't sound like anything else I use on course either. And yeah, so I'm not saying you all have to go around shouting push at the top of your lungs for the whole show to hear. But that's kind of my example. I do think making cues really, really obvious to your dog as they approach the behavior or the obstacle is super beneficial. So the cue and the desi desired behaviour that follows it need to be as obvious as possible to avoid confusion and help speed up the learning process. So I'm choking on nothing. And you want to be giving this cue nice and early as well. So, for example, if your dog was going jump tunnel dog walk, as your dog's entering the tunnel, start saying your cue for the dog walk, if that makes sense. Dog training in general is pretty much all about making everything as clear as possible to your dog. And that is a great way to do it. So those are my tips on surviving the running dog walk training process, essentially. Um, it is very frustrating at times. And all I can say is just stick it out. Don't give up. We all have phases where, you know, even for weeks or months on end where it's just not going well, we think... This is never going to work out. We're ne I'm never going to get a great running dog walk out of this. You will. You know, go back on my social media and have a look at the video that compares Arrow's old dog walks to his dog walks now. At that time, I was like, wow, I really, really can't imagine him ever having a great dog walk. Now look at him. Yes, it took me. It took over four years. Imagine if I'd given up after two years and even at two years at the time seemed like a ridiculous amount of time. But now I'm like, thank God I carried on because he's still, he's not, he's, well, actually he's turning five in tomorrow. He's turning five tomorrow. Exciting. Um, and he's still young. He's still got years, hopefully, ahead of him doing agility and being successful and showing off his dog walk, et cetera, et cetera. So just stick it out. It's worth it. I promise you. And if you want to be guided through the process from the very start to where Arrow is today, please do get in touch because I would love to help you achieve a running dog walk. That makes you smile because we all deserve to smile at our contacts, don't we? Especially when we work so hard to get them. And that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode and please do get in touch if you have any other further questions or, as I already said, are interested in my running dog walk course um, or my one-to-one -one online coaching. I have lots of time on my hands to help you all at the moment, um, obviously with my foot. Uh, but yeah. Oh, another thing I didn't mention was Inspire. I was meant to be judging Inspire and obviously it didn't happen. So I sent my courses in because apparently a judge was going to stand in and use them. Turns out the judge didn't really use them in the end. They kind of kind of used them to create their own courses but then my name was still on plaza and yeah but they weren't my courses so I did post my actual original courses that I was meant to use on Facebook Instagram um on the inspire group on agility course plans group and I really am sad because I really did love those courses um designing them was so much fun uh, included the four to five and six seven finals but anyway at least you all get to see them online um and you can set them up in training, maybe if you want to, or little bits, uh, little skills that I've incorporated in them. But yeah, go check them out. They're really fun. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I'm going to try and keep staying positive with this whole foot thing. And hopefully it will be a dim and distant memory in no time. So with that, don't forget to leave the podcast a rating or review. Five stars if you're feeling super generous. Thank you, guys. Love you all. And also give me a follow on all of the social medias at Pause in Pursuit on pretty much every platform, especially Instagram. I'm trying to stay as active as possible on there, even though I'm not really doing a lot, especially not doing a lot of agility. But hopefully within the next few weeks, I will start doing a bit more agility, obviously all from a distance, but still um, can get some content, can get some training videos, you know, get creative with what I set up, etc, etc. 
And yeah, look out for my home workouts that I'll be posting in the next few days or weeks. Hopefully I have filmed them. I just need to edit them and upload them. To be honest, I am feeling great fitness wise, like lifting lighter um, with obviously just the dumbbells and body weight and resistance bands has actually left me feeling quite good. I'm not going to lie. Um, I feel my six pack coming back because previously I was bulking. So I was trying to gain a load of muscle lifting heavy, you know, like one to five reps, etc. And I actually think I prefer this kind of training, more higher reps, slightly lighter. Yeah, I'm just feeling more athletic, weirdly, because I haven't, it is weird because I haven't been to the gym in a month. And yet I'm actually feeling really fit and quite good. You know, we're focusing on the controllables. It's all about controlling the controllables. So nutrition, the exercise you can do, you know, my business. So yeah, I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right everything's fine. Everything will be fine. And I will listen back to myself in a few months and be like, damn, glad that's over. What a time to be alive. And yeah, but I hope you all have a great week, guys. Um, Still got some upcoming guests um, lined up for the podcast, just trying to get them all sorted out. But there are some great episodes coming. Um, Please do keep letting me know of future guests you would like me to have on the podcast and the topics that you would like us to cover, as well as topics for solo episodes like I've done today, please do let me know. And with that, I will speak to you all next Wednesday. In the meantime, see you across there, across there. See you across on social media. I need to stop talking. Bye.